Portable power stations are a great way to take the energy you need to where you need it most, while also giving you the ability to recharge their batteries by harnessing the power of the sun through solar panels. Now, selecting the right solar panel for your portable power station is essential to getting good performance out of it, but there are a lot of options out there and it can be overwhelming. This video is here to make it easy for you by showing you the different panel types, examining their pros and cons and how to best install them, and then giving you the knowledge to wire them correctly, choose the correct wire, and make sense of the labels on the back of third-party panels so you can choose one that will work with your anchor system without worry. There are two main types of solar panel construction out there. The first is your classic solar panel like this one here. It uses a glass top sheet to protect the cells beneath and it has an aluminum frame that gives it the rigidity and structure it needs to be mounted securely. The other type of solar panel approaches the problem completely differently and it does not have a frame at all and it doesn't use glass as its top sheet. These are these portable and flexible panels like the three in front of me. We have a 100, 200, and 400 watt panel from Anchor, and all of these have the ability to unfold and fold so that you can deploy them when you need them, where you need them, with ease. Now comparing these two panel styles is a bit like apples to oranges. The rigid panels are a great choice if you want to economically and permanently mount solar on a vehicle or structure, but if you want something that you can take camping, well, putting these in the back of your car just isn't going to be a practical choice. That's where these foldable and flexible panels really shine. Not only do they pack up small, but they're lightweight, they don't have a frame, and they don't require permanent installation in order for you to get the solar power out of them. The panels in front of me from Anchor actually also include built-in tilt mechanisms so that you can always keep them pointed at the sun and maximize your solar harvest throughout the day. Another great feature that portable panels offer is the ability to be used as a supplement to an existing solar power system. Say you have a small van and you've already got some rigid panels mounted on the roof, but during those winter months or certain days when you're boondocking, you really wish you had more power. Well, keeping a 400 watt panel like this one under your bed or in the trunk of your van and deploying it as needed is a great way to make up for your shortcomings on your available roof space so that you can still get all the power you need even if you can't fit all the panels you want on the roof of your rig. The last step in picking out the right solar panel for your application is deciding the size of the panel you want to use and that's usually measured in watts. Typically, if I'm installing rigid panels like this one, I try to find the largest panel that I can that will fit the available space. That's gonna give me the most efficient use of that space and help keep costs down on the install. Now, if I'm looking at flexible panels in those applications, my priorities shift and you can look at it two different ways. The first type is, let's get the biggest flexible panels we can so that when we deploy them, we're gonna maximize our solar harvest. And that's great, and especially if you're taking your panels in something like a large vehicle that has places that you can stow them without too much trouble. The other situation is taking solar power to places you never thought were possible. And that's when I have a tendency to opt for smaller panels like this 100 watt panel in front of me. 100 watts of solar is enough to power most small loads that you would have in a normal day of camping, including keeping an electric cooler chilled. What I like about it is it's got handles and storage compartments that mean I can grab this and go in one trip from my car and have an entire solar power system with me in a place where I never thought that was possible before. Before I go any farther, I wanna show you what the process is like for setting up and deploying a folding portable solar panel like the ones from Anchor. This here is their 100 watt solar panel. Now the first step is opening it up like this, facing the sun, and then you go ahead and deploy their kickback legs on the back here. What I like about these legs is they let you dial in the angle that the panel faces toward the sun. And if you use this little gauge on the front, it'll help you make sure that it's always optimally focused at the sun so you're using it in the most efficient way possible. Now, when you're done using the panel at the end of the day, folding it up is super simple. Just tuck the sides in like that and you're good to go. You can see why I love these options when you need a portable solution for generating solar panel and you don't have the room for a fixed panel like this one. The first step in understanding the electrical characteristics of a solar panel is locating and taking a look at the gray sticker on the back of the unit. The sticker here contains a lot of words and numbers, but there are three that we are going to be most concerned with. The wattage, the open circuit voltage, and the short circuit current. In our case, the wattage of this panel is 200 watts, and that's great. It's below the limits of all of our Solix products, but it is something that you do want to maximize whenever possible without going over the limit of the Solix because that's just power wasted at the end of the day. The next number we have here is the open circuit voltage. 
This is the one that is most critical and the most important one to know and follow when you're selecting your panels. That's because we do not want to ever exceed 60 volts coming into the Solix. That's because the limit on the solar input for all of the Solix products is 60 volts, and if we exceed that, it'll shut down. We see here that this panel has a maximum open circuit voltage of 27 volts, so it'll work great with our system. And we could even have two of these together strung in series, and that will not exceed the 60 volt input limit of our Anchor Solix products. The last thing you'll see here is the short circuit current. For us, that is going to be 9.6 amps. 9.6 amps is gonna work great with our products and because 9.6 amps is something that the included wire, which is 10 gauge, can easily handle, we know we can wire it up safely without risk of overheating or damaging our conductors. Now that you know which style of panel is right for you and how to decipher the label on the back of a third party panel, it's time to go over how to wire those together to get that power into your Anchor Solix the safest and most optimal way possible. Anchor makes it easy for us because all of their units use the same style plug for their solar input. That is an XT60 style connector. In order to connect your solar panels to your Anchor Solix products, all you need to do is find the appropriate cable and adapters to go from the output of your solar panel into the XT60 port of your Solix. Now keep in mind, if you're using all Anchor branded solar panels, you don't need to worry about wiring them together in series or parallel because the included cables and connectors will make sure that you always get that right no matter what. However, if you are wiring in a third party panel, making sure that you wire it in correctly is going to be critical to making sure that you stay below that 60 volt limit. Wiring your panels in parallel versus series can be complicated, but let's cut to the chase so that we can make it work for you. If you wire panels in series, that entails connecting the positive of one panel to the negative of the next, and then the positive of that panel to the negative of the one after that, so forth and so forth on down the line until all of your panels are connected together. When you do that, you have to keep in mind that the output voltage of your panels is additive. So if you have a 24 volt panel and another 24 volt panel, when you wire them in series, that puts you up at 48 volts. If you were to wire a third panel up, that would put you at 72 volts, and that would exceed the input limit on your Anchor Solix. The way around that would be to wire your panels in parallel. Parallel involves connecting all of the negatives together in one point and all of the positives together in one point, so that the voltage does not add up. That would mean you would be coming into your Solix at still the same 24 volt output as one panel. It's important to keep in mind that no matter how you wire your panels, be that in series or parallel, the amount of power coming into your unit does not change. It simply appears as a different combination of voltage or amperage. When it's time to connect your anchor panels into your Solix system, it's very simple using the supplied connectors. All anchor solar panels either use an XT60 output, like this 200 watt panel here, or an MC4 output, like this 400 watt panel here. If you are using an MC4 output panel, like this 400 watt unit, it will come with an adapter to get you from the MC4 connections on the solar panel to the XT60 plug that you'll need to plug into your Anchor Solix. For connecting these together in parallel, I recommend the use of branch connectors like this that have MC4 style connectors on each end. Connectors like this allow you to join two panels together in parallel to give you one main positive and negative output that you would then connect to your XT60 adapter and bring into the input on your Anchor Solix. For connecting the smaller anchor panels together that use XT60 style connections, all you need is an XT60 cable like this one connected to the output of your solar panel going into a branch connector like this, which is meant for parallel connection of multiple panels. With this plugged into the input of the Solix, you can combine up to five separate solar panels, giving you the wattage combination you need to power the devices that you want to run without exceeding your voltage limit input of 60 volts on your Solix products. There's a lot that goes into making sure you pick the right solar panel for your portable power station, but I hope this video has made that a little bit easier for you. If you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe so that we can give you all the tips and tricks you need to keep living in power.